So I was just finishing a video about the center of the Milky Way and some of the major discoveries from the central black hole, the video that was just released I guess a few days ago, and suddenly this new extremely interesting study comes out out of nowhere, basically describing another exciting discovery from the Milky Way galaxy, but this time not from the center, from the outskirts. And it potentially represents something completely groundbreaking. A discovery of some kind of a constellation of stars that potentially represents a dark matter galaxy or something entirely different we still don't understand. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's talk about this very important astronomical discovery, currently referred to as Ursa Major 3 or Unions 1, representing an unusual satellite of the Milky Way whose actual nature is currently unknown, but it seems to be the first such satellite ever discovered and may potentially lead to some major discoveries about the mysteries of the universe. But, as you can see from this image, it doesn't actually look like much. Which is why it was never really discovered until now, because it basically just blends in with everything. This is literally in the constellation of Ursa Major, or the Big Dipper, and it just blends in with some of the other stars here. But turns out that this is an ancient star system. Definitely over 10 billion years old, but possibly even older. It's also approximately 30,000 light years away from the Sun, and it's basically on the outskirts of the Milky Way, in a very similar location to many different globular clusters that usually orbit around the Milky Way galaxy. But globular clusters possess a lot of stars and are usually easily visible. Here though, this is something entirely different. This is basically something resembling a typical cluster, not a globular cluster, just a regular cluster, that often contains possibly a few dozen stars. In this case it contains 60 stars, and it's only about 10 light years across. And even in terms of the total mass of stars, it seems to be only about 16 solar masses. But it's extremely unlikely to be a cluster for one simple reason, its current age and its location around the Milky Way. Here's actually what a typical cluster would look like, in this case this is Messier 47. And the reason this is not a star cluster, probably, or basically not an open star cluster, is because usually these are very very young and they don't last very long. Over time they become disrupted by gravitational influence from a lot of things nearby and if they're on the outskirts of the galaxy, from the galaxy itself, they get ripped apart by tidal forces. And so most of them are only a few million years old, with some exceptions that are maybe a few billion years old. There are not a lot of these exceptions, but they're usually much more concentrated and actually only the cluster that you see right here is known to be exceptionally old. This is M67 or Messier 67. But the reason this cluster still exists and the reason that it's so old, specifically it's about 4 billion years old, is first of all because stars here are a little bit closer together, so they're basically holding together much tighter, and it also orbits in such a way around the galaxy that it doesn't get as many tidal effects from the galactic plane. But it is still falling apart and it's eventually going to disappear over time. As a kind of an interesting side note, because this cluster is so old, it also apparently has quite a lot of planets. Quite a lot of giant planets have been discovered inside the cluster and it seems to be an exception because these do not exist in other clusters as they're much younger and usually have too many gravitational disruptions for planets to form. And so M67 is kind of unique. But anyway, moving on. So yeah, most clusters are much younger. Yet this cluster seems to be over 10 billion years old based on the age of the stars. But because the stars here are not really that massive, and overall this doesn't actually even have that much mass, something else seems to be holding them together. Such a tiny star system should have already been broken apart by the galaxy and various interactions over billions of years. And so one of the questions here was, ok, maybe this is just completely by accident. Maybe these stars just kind of find themselves in this location and this is just by pure chance. But the researchers decided to investigate this using additional observations from, for example, the Keck Observatory. And the new measurements definitively indicate that the stars here are moving through space at very similar velocities, but also seem to be very similar in terms of chemistry and composition, implying that they were all formed around the same time, roughly around 10 billion years ago. Moreover, additional observations were able to calculate dispersion velocity, or essentially determining by how much the velocity here differs from star to star. And it's not a lot. It's approximately 3.5 km per second. Yet these stars together are moving at hundreds of kilometers per second, very close to the Milky Way. And so basically something here 
is holding all of them as one single object and has been doing this for at least 10 billion years. And this is actually the first such object. And right now the scientists are not entirely certain what exactly this is and how to classify it. And so they basically gave it two separate names. If this is a typical star cluster, just like the ones we've seen before, and just a special one that for some reason did not fall apart, or maybe we're just observing it in a kind of a unique and somewhat lucky arrangement, it should be named after the survey that discovered this particular object. The survey name is Unions, and so this would be known as Unions 1. But there is another really intriguing proposition and really intriguing explanation that the scientists are currently leading toward. And for that reason, it also has a second name. It's known as Ursa Major 3 or Yuma 3. Because here they think that it could be one of many different satellites of the Milky Way that are not just clusters, but are actually ancient galaxies. Dwarf galaxies. Like the Sagittarius dwarf that's barely visible, but that influenced the Milky Way over billions of years and potentially led to the formation of the solar system as well. In other words, this could be some kind of an ultra-faint dwarf galaxy. Specifically, a dark matter dominated ultra faint dwarf galaxy. Or, I guess, just to rephrase this, it could be a dark matter galaxy orbiting around the Milky Way. Because in this case, if this was dark matter, it would definitely be able to hold this together and prevent this from falling apart. And it's possibly dark matter chunk or a concentration of dark matter in the halo of the Milky Way that currently makes the most sense. And that's because we actually believe there is a lot of dark matter on the outskirts of the Milky Way. We just can't really detect it yet, because we don't really know what to look for. But there is huge amounts of evidence that it is there, based on previous studies you can find in the description. Which is really the best explanation for how this object is able to maintain itself and stay gravitationally bound for 10 billion years. No other explanation right now makes a lot of sense. And since the dispersion velocity of these stars is also relatively low, right now the scientists are really leaning toward this dark matter hypothesis. Mostly because, in this location, the tidal forces from the Milky Way are just a little bit too strong, and so this object would not survive for even a few million years. And by itself, this discovery has a lot of implications for a lot of different cosmological ideas as well. Assuming that this is indeed an extremely faint dark matter leftover galaxy, it would confirm a major hypothesis about how galaxies form. Their formation usually starts with dark matter, assembling everything together and creating large concentrations where a lot of gas then falls in and starts forming what you see right here. But during this assembly process, it attracts a lot of different pieces from everywhere and many of these become dwarf satellites. Would one of them potentially discover just now? And so this could be officially the first ever example and the first ever confirmation for this theoretical process that has been simulated but never seen in real life. Moreover, it could lead to conclusive evidence for the existence of dark matter as something as a particle and not just some kind of a part of a formula. And so additional confirmation and additional studies about this cluster or about this unusual object are definitely needed. But until actual classification and until someone figures out what this is, it's going to remain a mystery for at least a few more months. And it's also going to have those two names, Ursa Major 3 or Unions 1. But if this ends up being some kind of a dwarf galaxy after all, and basically represents almost completely invisible dwarf galaxy orbiting the Milky Way, it might lead to a complete redefinition of what a galaxy actually is. Because in this case, it only contains a handful of stars. But for some reason, has something inside of it that prevents it from falling apart, maintaining all of these stars as a single object, preventing them from escaping. And so basically, just the fact that the system is stabilized by something kind of implies that this is maybe a galaxy after all. Or at least some kind of a dark matter satellite that we've never seen before. So yeah, a super exciting discovery for astronomers and something we'll be discussing once there are more observations and Solomon finally discovers exactly what's happening here. But until then, let's just keep it a mystery. And if you've enjoyed this video, subscribe and maybe check out some of the other similar videos in the description below. Including one of the more recent discoveries of these really huge structures inside the Milky Way that we never knew existed. Anyway, thank you for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.